World Combat Sports. Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. It's a glorious Friday. I just want to touch bases and just make mention to all those purists and mainstream boxing fans to follow me on all social media outlets via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and smash that like button and punch the bell icon and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's truly appreciated and salute to all of those who are in out there supporting the channel and the group of world combat sports today's topic is pretty much what's been over the media scrum for the past weeks and months and that is the visit of anthony joshua and eddie herms who came over here to the nyc to promote the alexander pavekian anthony joshua about this going down in september okay but i just wanted to touch bases a little bit about what led up to that we all know that Deontay Wilder was off the 12.5 initially to take this bout. That's a flat fee with no future earnings, okay? Future earnings meaning the PPV revenue, you gave any proceeds, therefore following. Then the lowball offer was pretty much um, turned down and negotiations still was active and open. And then it led up to the point in the media where Anthony Joshua now, who who isn't one of those astute um, advocates, you know, for himself when he's in the media because he's good on the phone, but he's not very, very comfortable in public when he's in the lens. He's right there in the lens and he has to do a um, impromptu interview. He's not that, that, that well versed and it's proven. But I want, what I wanted to mention is an article that came out in the New York Times. And I will keep this brief enough to the point where you fans out there that's listening in, I want you to just take some notes so you can have a clear understanding of what's going on with Anthony Joshua. As we all know that he turned down $50 million and he chose to sign Alexander Povekian bout for September. And don't say it was just because the WBA mandated. No, they had plenty of time. And this is this art article is going to cover a lot of it. OK. Quote, someone in the crowd jumped at the opportunity and shouted, AJ, we want Wilder. And AJ responded, let them train to be a fighter and fight Deontay Wilder. It's easy talking about it. It's another thing doing. That's the that's the arrogance of Anthony Joshua, you know. Here's a fighter in Joshua's 21 and 0, 20 knockouts and refused to fight Wilder, who was 40 and 0, 39 knockouts. He refused to fight him. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, when these fights was um, when these talks, negotiations were basically gathering up more lava flow and, and the barometer was about to explode as to why this bout could not be signed between Team Wilder and Eddie Hearns and Joshua, it also mentions in this article, in June, the World Boxing Association ordered Joshua to fight Pavekian. Pavekian, who has a ledger of 34 victories, one defeat, and 24 knockouts. Or they would strip Anthony Joshua of the title, that title being the WBA, okay? So, out of nowhere, he signed, ending his chances of Wilder Joshua fight in 2018. Let me clarify. When they made the 24-hour mandate, he did not sign right away. He, he signed several days past that. Okay? So, regardless of what this article is mentioning, he didn't sign immediately. He didn't sign. It goes on to say, Wilder said if Joshua wanted the fight to happen, it would have happened. That's what Wilder mentioned. He said if Joshua wanted the fight to happen, it would happen. Moving on. Quote, most definitely he could have gotten an exemption for this fight, Wilder said. That was the least of his worries right there because everyone wants it. When everyone wants it, then there's nothing that could stand in the way of a fight of this magnitude. No possible way. So then, Wilder speaks of, even when he's announcing Pavekian, they're talking about me. Everywhere we go, they're talking about this fight. But Joshua doesn't care what everyone wants. The article states, he said he's following protocol. You, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
They're boxing fans, aficionados, purists, mainstreamers. He said, this career isn't determined by what people want. This is Joshua. This career isn't determined by what people want. It's my career. I've always pulled for and done what was right for myself, which has ultimately led me to becoming a champion. If you want to know what belts he's holding, he's holding three major belts, which is the WBA, IBF, and WBO. Okay? He is a unified heavyweight champion. That in itself is validated legit. Okay? It moves on. If the two were to fight, which they still both believe they will, the winner would be named the undisputed heavyweight boxing champion. But guess what? That's far and few in between now because now Alexander Povetkin is the one that's going to be standing across on September in the glorified Wembley Stadium. And we're going to talk about that particular matter just a little bit later. It goes on in quote, it's not about the big light, Joshua said. It's not about taking from the industry. I don't want to drive a Rolls Royce tomorrow. I don't want a one fight, a one hit fight wonder. Then I'm a champion one week and a few months later, I lost it because I'm living the life. I want to add to the industry, give back. I do it because I'm passionate about it. That's Joshua. Let me let me rephrase this. Let me go over there. Let me skim through this again. You know, ice is slick. And it's a cold, cold reminder to those fans who just want to jump on the bandwagon. Joshua said, it's not about the big light. It's not about taking from the industry. What industry are you speaking on? I don't want to drive a Rolls Royce tomorrow. I don't want a one hit fight wonder. Then I'm a champion one week and a few months later, I've lost it because I'm living the life. I want to add to the industry, give back. I do it because I'm passionate about it. He's passionate, y'all. He's so passionate enough, he won't even sign the dotted line since, you know, Deontay agreed to the 15 million and the fight in the UK and accepted to the 50 million to have a fight in the US. And all of that was squandered because he just didn't want to step up. The article goes on to say his passion is just different from Wilder. And that is the absolute truth. Joshua's passion is different than Wilder. Wilder has the passion to fight the best. Joshua has the passion to do everything but that. Everything but fight the best. He's in the hurt business. He's a unified champion. He's trying his best just to babysit and conceal and restrict and just basically hang around long enough and hoping this storm go away. But it's not going anywhere. That's why I'm on the mic. It's not going anywhere. We're going to keep on talking about it. Let's move on. He said Wilder accepted a flat fee of 15 million and offered Joshua a guaranteed 50 million and plus 50 percent of the revenue. 50 percent of the revenue if the fight took place in the U.S. But guess what? We're talking about Joshua's passion. He refused it and he wanted the fight to go in the U.K., so, of course, Deontay Wilder, he's not going to say, OK, I'll give you 50 million and the fight be in the UK. The offer is off the table. It's done. Never agreed upon. Period. It's done. Wilder goes on to say, we've done everything. Wilder said, I can't express how much I mean by what when I say we've done everything day and night, day and night, day and night. And the only thing they're done them being Eddie Hearns, Anthony Joshua, is try to come up with the plans of distracting the fans and trying to come up with plans of lies and contradiction, you know? It goes on to say, more negotiations took place. Place Each side says something different transpired. Wilder say Joshua sent blank contracts missing a date or place. Joshua say Wilder didn't meet the deadline. There was also a disputed rematch clause. From what has been on record, Shelly Finkel has mentioned going on record is saying they requested the contract at a specific date. And that contract deadline was not met. It was exceeded and the contract was then delivered days after. At that point of reference, the, the stipulation that Eddie Hearns put on there to have the contract back couldn't be met because they left a fight date and a fight venue blank. They just wanted them to sign an open-ended contract. We all know, those of you that's out here, intelligent, understanding, 
competent, truly a read, is, is, is able to read through all of what you're hearing. You're able to digest it accordingly. Let me move on. There were also disputed rematch clause. Now, for what has been said in the, in, the, in the media scrum across the board, right, that the rematch clause of Joshua win, he, he does, you know, Deontay Wilder doesn't get a rematch. But if Deontay Wilder is victorious, guess what? Joshua gets a rematch. The article goes on to read, regardless, months pass without any signed contract leading the WBA to step in. Wilder thinks Joshua would rather fight Povetkin anyway because he's not ready to compete against the best, the best being Deontay Wilder. Wilder mentioned, Wilder has a big power punch. This is Povetkin, right? Povetkin now is coming up to the surface and taking a breath. Now that he's in the spotlight, Wilder has a big power punch, but he likes to fight. He likes to get into a brawl a little bit, Povetkin said through a translator. Now you're talking about a fighter who did nothing but brawl with Carlos Takam when he knocked him out in the 10th round. He wasn't boxing. He was brawling. He was standing in the pocket and both fighters was just throwing punches, punches and bunches. And, and they wasn't even setting up their punches. If a fighter is close enough and you're swinging, you're going to touch something. And that's what both fighters were doing. Moving on. End quote. Josh was more technical. This is Povetkin. He also has a lot of power. It would be different approach, but they're both great fighters. Povetkin would rather fight Josh with the article states, probably because he's going to. But thoughts of fighting Wilder crossed his mind often. He'd be glad to get in that ring, too. They've tried, but two failed drug tests by Povetkin prevented the fight from actually happening. It goes on to quote, if Povetkin defeats Joshua, the unification discussion might change. Only time will tell. Both parties say they want it to happen. It's just not happening this year. And we all are pretty much clear on that perspective right there. The battle is not happening this year between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Goes on to say Joshua has Povetkin at Wembley Stadium in London, in London. Wilder says he will also have a fight and to be on the lookout for an announcement soon. Speaking of that Wembley deal, which I mentioned to you earlier, right? When this WBA situation came about, prior to Eddie Hearn had mentioned that there's no way that he's able to lock in Wembley. It's just not available. For Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. So all of a sudden, when the bout is signed and those particular negotiations between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder was severed, then all of a sudden, the big, huge coup de gras, the grand finale, the climactic moment of announcing Anthony Joshua has signed a two fight deal with Wembley Stadium, one for September 2018 and the other for April 2019. So there you have it. There you have it. That particular venue wasn't available for Deontay Wilder, but it's available for Alexander Povetkin. Also wasn't available for Deontay Wilder was an eight-week training camp, which Eddie Hearns has made it clear that Anthony Joshua needs more than eight weeks to train for Deontay Wilder, but he doesn't need it for Alexander Povetkin. People, this is this is this is clear. It's lucid to all of you that's out there that's retaining these audibles that we're speaking on the media scrum. The ones that's out here covering combat sports, you totally get it. And for those of you that refuse to understand and absorb it the way that it's conducive to your understanding of this, then try a bit harder because it's clear that the WBC title holder Deontay Wilder has did everything possible to step up and make this bow happen. And he should be credited that. He should be credited. For those U.S. fans who are still out here vilifying Deontay Wilder with unwarranted vitriol, you should take a step back and reassess yourself and say, truly, am I right? Am I within my right to be criticizing the wrong participant? The one who is in the hurt business, who has stepped up to the plate and did everything accordingly 
to make sure he negotiate not only for himself, but that of his family. Has Deontay Wilder did that? Yes, he did. Absolutely. He's did it. And you all need to make sure that you identify that and stop saying, well, he should have taken um, the 12.5. He should have taken the 15 million. Listen, he's 6'7". How far does he have to bend backwards? 6'7 to the floor before something cracks. He's represented accordingly. He did everything that a U.S. champion, a boxing champion should do. He's made it perfectly clear that he want to fight the best and you all should embrace it. You all should embrace it. Don't say Deontay Wilder is a trash talker and you want to find reasoning to dilute his credentials. A boxer with 40 victories, zero defeats and 39 knockouts. He's did what he's supposed to do. When a fighter is saying they need more than eight weeks to train for one particular fighter, when a fighter is basically saying, give me 50 million and it's met and he declines it. When they offer him a 15 million flat fee just as a deterrent, a deflective in nature, then you should really look at the, the other side of the pun and see who's the one that's making up excuses. I've never seen this type of attention, this type of energy, to redirect something that's so clear in the, in the hurt business. It's, it's very clear that we have two of the top tier fighters in the heavyweight division in boxing that should be facing off versus one another. And we have a absolute debacle. We have, we have negotiations that's turned into verbal sparring in the media instead of sparring in the ring. That is where we at. But fight fans, the positive outlook on this all is that the mic will continue to be read. That means it will be powered on and voices will be heard and the audibles will be clear. Absolutely. This is World Combat Sports. Thank you for tuning in and those who support. Please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And follow me on all social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please be sure to listen to my podcast. It's much appreciated. And salute to you all. And until next time, turn up and tune in.